Ice Spice don't need Taylor. Uh, Taylor doesn't need Ice Spice either. Yes, she does. That's why she called her. What do you mean needs Ice Spice? Because Taylor Swift is getting old out here, y'all. Are she you crazy? Taylor Swift is getting old. She want to be cool. Taylor Swift ain't cool like that, bro. What am bro. I missing? Not, I mean, maybe she's, she's getting older and I guess she, she just she's just less cool. But soccer moms love her. Did Taylor her fan Swift, base is getting did older. she not just sell out? Globally? For sure. Wasn't there like riots to for get her tickets? For People sure. All that's for great. 20. All that's great. But that don't mean that you're cutting edge like Ice Spice. Welcome to the Rap Life Review. Lo, Nadeska, I'm Ebro. How you guys doing? Great, good to see you. You ready for all this great discussion? So it's heated outside. Uh, yeah, I see. <laughs> Meek and drama. Okay. Uh, the five-year anniversary of Drake and the story of Adidon. Uh, what else we got? We got new music. Let's start there. Okay. That little Dirk album, Almost Healed. It's good. It's a good project. Uh, I feel like Dirk is like balancing this line now we're still hearing about you know his come up all the struggles the things he's been through talking about king von his family a lot but then also a couple of things got me by surprise is that track with like a country artist on there well, him and morgan have uh did another record on morgan wallen's album before this the, not the first okay I didn't that know was that. the n-word using morgan wallen that people was like yo my man <laughs> you was drunk using the n-word in the street even okay. yo even country music was like <laughs> hold on we Too gotta much. put you yeah, on time yeah, out on. my jay you gotta sit to the side room. now country music fans was like we ain't worried about no N-word, baby. We running these numbers. <laughs> and clearly Lil Durk was like, yo, you know, he's my guy. He's so. my guy, yeah. Yeah, nah. it's cool. It's not the, the, the kind of like song production you expect to hear Dirk on. Not a right. collaboration I, I next we saw. So it's a cool right. album. There's some good joints in there. Definitely very introspective. Uh, you know, Dirk is growing as an artist. Um, you want to see an artist like that have progression, trajectory. Um, I'm not the biggest Lil Durk fan, but, you know, I like the couple songs. But I like rapping Dirk. Okay. Is this rapping oh, Dirk? There's rapping Dirk on the album, but yeah. there's also singing Dirk. Yeah. I'm a rapping Dirk kind yeah. of guy, but I get he's it's from not, that. It's not. He's whole, from that time period, yeah. you know that that kind of Drake usher. I mean, he's always been around, but right. that kind of singing, you know, it's always kind of been auto tuning a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in there. Um, those are good songs. People love them. I'm more of a fan of when he gets straight to the raps. Yeah. Um, I like this project. I like his growth. Um, I think musically, like I, I often listen to you know at a certain part. Uh, I think point in an artist's journey, once they establish the brand and kind of what they're about, I always listen to like you said the growth. Like, what where, where are we going, bro? Right. Like, what what's next? What story are we what, telling? Boom. Right. One thing I've always appreciated about Dirk, he's never tried to act too cool about being in love mm -hmm. with his woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I've appreciated that as a grown grown ass man. You mm -hmm. know, like I like to see men not try to be too cool. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, you like somebody. Like, every, you ain't... Every, <laughs> you like somebody. You, there's you like, somebody you, like you really somebody like, like, bro. Yeah, like, stop. Yeah. And that's one of the things I've always appreciated yeah. about Dirk is there's a there's dimensions, dynamic. You know, And I think, like, I think going through this album, he was going through that situation. Right. With his lady. Yep. So I think that's why we're hearing these kind of thoughts and these kind of lyrics and these kind of, like, emotions. So great album, Dirk. Salute to you. Uh, much success. Also, Kodak Black, I think, on this album, dug in. He usually, he's another one. I don't think he gets credit because of the craziness he does in general mm -hmm. in his life. Mm -hmm. But if you really listen to Kodak Black, he's trying to sort through some serious demons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A kid that's been in and out of jail since 13, 14 years old and just trying, you know, he's always had I don't love all the records, like the song structure. Right, right. Like there's things I don't like about, but lyrically and what he tries to do to have depth and perspective in his writing and how he comes at things, I think Kodak Black is a very interesting uh, and talented person. I'm not gonna lie. Um, after hearing him on Kendrick's albums, like I've liked some Kodak songs over the years. I'm not gonna say like I know all of his projects front to back, but I feel like I've, I'm a little bit open-minded, more open-minded towards him now since right. the Kendrick collaboration to your well, point that he's... I think Kendrick, I think that's why Kendrick chose yeah. to show, shone a light. Am I saying or that right? Shone, shine a different light. Yeah, shine, shine, shine a light. <laughs> shone a light on him. Shine, shine a light on him. Yeah. Is that what was you shining a light on him? Yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because of what I'm saying, like I think rappers and people who come from certain environments can hear in Kodak that he's trying to work through some right. shit. But a lot of us want to just write him off. And I applaud Kendrick for that. You know what I'm saying? Bringing people kind of to, to see the light shone upon Kendrick. You finally I mean, got, it. You got it. You got it right. I got it right? You got, got it right. It. Okay, yeah. boom. Yeah. Uh, shout to our boy Rory, who put out a phenomenal project of R&B, some hip hop it's in there as album. well. Yeah. Uh, dope listen. I thought it'd be different. Uh, and then some singles to pay attention to. Glorilla put out some good porn rap. 
You know what I'm saying? Sexy Red, Nicki Minaj came with some good porn rap. Excuse me, isn't all rap what porn is rap? What is porn rap? Most rap, I feel like no, 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 these songs are egregious, B. These songs are these songs are egregious and descriptive and vivid. Isn't that how? M- so two live crews, porn rap for sure. Okay. Okay. Akinelli, Akinelli, porn rap all day. Okay. Oh, you had a list ready. Okay. No, I just like he's into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm just like I'm, make the playlist. I got, no, I just no, I, just I make it. the porn okay, rap playlist. Right, Thanks. Right. But yeah, no, they did their thing on that, and then also Diddy, the City Girls, and Fab. It's a cool record. Where's the R&B album? I thought he was dropping an R&B. That's album. what, what I was exactly wanted to talk so about. Where this come from, I Diddy? I thought we was in R&B I was zone. Like, oh, this is a Diddy City Girls R&B track with Fab. Interesting. It's not that. It's not that it's at not all. Not that at all. Bro, all right. No one. He just wanted a summer record. Is this the one? No. It's I, not. Look, I'm a City Girls Go fan. JT went crazy on the record. I love, I love the way they That's sound on cool. record. That's cool. No one cares about this fucking record, bro. Why are you being like this? Act, act bad. Call, what's it called? Act bad. Act good. Act what? What's it called? Act bad. Bro. It's called act bad. The title yeah, you have a on there. Why are you doing this, man? Can we just be honest? Yo, Diddy, just call him. You know you're gonna call no. him. Diddy gonna be on your jack. Can he we gonna just, change no, his tune in like no, a week after saying, Diddy wears his ass Can we just be honest about some shit? Like, yeah, it's what? a cool club record. Yeah, that's what I think. That's, that's all that's it was meant to be. Alright, cool. That's what we're gonna leave it. R&B album coming for winter season. We don't coven, know. That's not season. No, I, I, I can't. Yeah, it has to, it's yeah. gonna come. He just wanted to talk. Okay. And then Kendrick and Keem dropped real quick. Boom. They just dropped like hillbillies. Tyler the Creators on it, or at least in the visual. Um, I loved it. What I heard, I loved the tempo. I loved the tempo of the record. Um, I like what Kendrick's saying on the record. He's having fun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For the people that don't want to hear him, you know, expose your uh, toxicity and and, and things you need to improve your life. You want him to just be, he talking about random girls that shouldn't be, you know, talking too much and he can't be seen with them. You know, all the toxic shit. Back to the toxicity. You know what I'm saying? Brings out the youthful Kendrick. I mean, last year, Keem said that... um, He'd be open to doing like a collab project with him. He said 50 50 chance wait, 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 if it out. happens. Time out. Baby Keem said he would be open, available. Oh, come on, you know to what To collabing I mean? with he one said... of the greatest hip hop <laughs> artists of all time? That's what he said? Never mind, let's just move on. Yo, maybe. <laughs> I might have time in my schedule. I might got. To collab with my cousin. Two months. That literally, literally gave me my, my whole career. career. I was just trying to say. And brought me on tour. He said. There's a yo, 50 I thought, yeah, yo, yo, okay, yo, I'm not sure, bitch. Y'all are mad at Yo, annoying. that's like Eve telling me, like, yo, <laughs> I got a show for you. There's a 50-50 chance I'm it could happen. I might, I might have some time. All right. I'm booked. I'm booked. I'm booked. In other news, uh, Lowe's favorite topic, the rise of Ice Spice. She is on uh, a Taylor Swift record now. Uh, she was brought out on stage multiple times over the past weekend in the Jersey area at MetLife at the stadium show. Why all of the bad body language? Nothing. Bro? No, I was just adjusting my pants. That's all. It's just the way you looked at <laughs> the way you looked at him. When like you, you looked at me, and then everybody started laughing. So like, yeah, okay, let's get to <laughs> well, it. Well, because they already know. All right, let's get to it. But Ice Spice, <laughs> I, a Taylor Swift record. Listen, it's huge. I'm a, I like Ice Spice. Let's just. I like Ice Spice. Okay. I like what she's brought to the game. I like that she's different. I like that she's just trying to be herself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She ain't trying to. Yeah. No. Do be nothing like but be yeah. who she is. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, I like the Nicki Minaj collab. I thought that was perfect. A iconic artist jumped on your song mm-hmm. and validated your lyrics by using your your flow, your, your flow, yeah, yeah, and yeah, some yeah, of your yeah. thing. And boom! Right. These the Taylor Swift move. I think it's too soon, and I don't think it's necessary. What do you mean too soon? Yeah, like why? Well, yeah, she doesn't even have her own album out. But it's exposure, regardless. To like, who? But what? To no, a pop audience, mm, which I feel like at some true. point every rapper wants to have a, a crossover like pop hit. She already has. She has a huge hit. Yeah, but what about the next one? Does she need how many huge hits does she need before she hasn't even established herself well I in hip hop? I think you want to keep consistent with the hits. I guess my question is: uh, so if Taylor Swift hits you up and you're Ice Spice, that's right. It's one of the biggest pop stars on the that's planet. Right. Are you I, supposed to say not hit me in two years? No, I would say I would. I would advise. I'm not ready yet. You can't say that. Y- yes, you can. You can say that. I thought that the Ice Spice has her own fan base. Taylor Swift is calling you because she wants to stand next to you. Ice Spice don't need Taylor. Uh, Taylor doesn't need Ice Spice either. Yes, she does. That's why she called her. What do you mean needs Ice Spice? Because Taylor Swift is getting old out here, y'all. Are she you ain't... crazy? Taylor Swift is getting old. She want to be cool. Taylor Swift ain't cool like that, bro. What am bro? I missing? Not, I mean, maybe she's, she's getting older and I guess she, she just she's just less cool. But... Soccer moms love her. Did Taylor her fan Swift, base is getting did older. Did she not just sell out globally? For sure. Wasn't there like riots to for get her tickets? For sure. Are All that's for great. 20... All that's great. But that don't mean that you're cutting edge like Ice Spice. I just don't see... <laughs> 
an upcoming rapper. Some people don't no. have vision like me. No, That's I feel cool. you, and it might not be you an amazing. You can't see into the future, sir. Sir, I I ain't seen them argue if like you this. Can in see a, in the I ain't seen them argue like this in a minute. That's why Ice I Spice is I not ain't ready for that. Fucking word. Ice dude. Spice ain't ready for that moment. Not ready for. Okay, so you're saying because the collaboration wasn't good, is that the point? I don't believe Ice Spice. A, has a stage show that's big enough to even stand next to Taylor Swift. One. Has never been on a stage that big before. Two. Doesn't even have an album. Three. Right? And then jumps on a Taylor Swift song. I mean, maybe there's a collab. Maybe Taylor's going to jump on an Ice Spice song later and it maybe. helps Ice Spice's album, which would be phenomenal. And I hope that's the case. But I still don't think that Ice Spice needs Taylor. Ice Spice has gotten this far doing her thing. That's why Nikki's calling her. These people aren't calling you because you don't matter. They're calling you because you do. I mean, I feel you, but... Listen, I know on the business side, everyone's going to say what you're saying and completely disagree with me. That's the not Swifties true. are going to act like they love Ice Spice and all that. I guarantee you none of them are buying an Ice Spice concert ticket. They're not. Unless Taylor's going to be there. They're not. They're not. Okay, so you think this was bad for her brand? I think it was too soon. I don't want to go with bad. I just think it was too soon. I don't think, I think it's going to like think, a major I, I setback. Think, I think, I, I think. just think it like, you haven't established yourself with a core hip hop fan right, base. You don't, right. who's your fan base? So if this doesn't give her any new fans, right? The Swifties don't care about the next Ice Spice single or the next Ice Spice. Uh, so what does she lose then? Nothing. Well, I she think doesn't it, gain She didn't either. gain anything. Yeah. So it's, other than she's in a neutral spot. Other Which than is people fine. saying, no, so, like, so she gets paid then. Is that yeah, bro? Right. She was at Kim Kardashian's house. She got a collab with Nicki Minaj. Bro, everybody's at Kim Kardashian's house. No, but I'm so just the saying, the girl, like, the girl, seven oh, months ago, right. eight months yeah. ago, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the girl, seven, eight months ago, was like on Grand Concourse, chilling. Like it's been eight, nine months, guys. Listen, that was that was a crazy, that was so crazy. <laughs> That was a crazy straight bullet, bro. Yo, it was wild. That was wild. That was a bar, though. Okay. But at, at any rate, I just think it was too soon. That's all. And I, if that's... Listen, it ain't my career. I just like the girl. I just think yeah. it's too I soon. Like, I and, like, I, and I do want to point out... I mean, it's you make valid important. points. No, it's very important. I do want to point out. Mm -hmm. When Nikki started making her pop, crossover pop, I'm going pop records... How many mixtapes and things had Nicki already done in hip hop and albums Several. to establish herself as yo? Like, no, I get to these bars. Like, don't but, ever but, play but with slowly me. Slowly transition. And then it was like, you know what? Let me go and do some of these Let me cross, have some super crossover yeah, 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 yeah. top 40 things. And and obviously hip hop heads was like, ah, come on. Right? Right. Maybe Ice Spice ain't even trying to be super hip hop like that. Okay. Maybe she, that ain't even where she want to go. So I could be completely wrong. I just still think it's too soon. Also want y'all to check out, man, um, for uh, 50 Years of Hip Hop, which everybody's doing amazing celebrations. At Apple Music, we decided to reverse chronological order, tell stories about some of your favorite artists and how they became who they are today, mm -hmm. but through music. Okay. So uh, if you look at somebody like Cardi B, who's from the Bronx, we don't get into like comparing her to other artists, but we look at what's going on in the Bronx culturally, mm -hmm. uh, musically, going all the way back to like Planet Rock and Zulu Nation. Nice. Or we have an episode about Lil Uzi Vert, looking at rock influenced hip hop mm. and electronic influenced hip hop, starting with Uzi Vert, going all the way back to the Beastie Boys gotcha. and Run DMC so. and kind of telling the story, but not just song for song, but we provide people with that, which you can, every episode comes with a playlist. Nice. We have one mix that we've released. The rest is confidential. Clark Kent put together an amazing mm -hmm. mix for us Shout Clark. Uh, for the first few, four episodes. And, um, we're going to break down origins, MCs, DJs, mm -hmm. producers, and we're going to do it all through the lens of reverse chronological order, trying to show how this kind of culture has evolved over the last 50 years. So it's a great listen. It's a podcast. You can get the music. You can get mixes along with it. Look up Hip Hop DNA, available on Apple Music right now. All right, let's get to the chaos, man. What's going on with Meek Mill, DJ Drama, man? What's, what's happening? Can somebody so, break this down? I didn't see it. I don't know. I certainly don't know or care, so you... Bro, again, I'm at the barbecue uh, last night. That's all I want to say. That's all I want to say. I'm Before watching Game 7 of the it. Heat and the Celtics, and all of a sudden I see Meek talking about, yo, Drama, Goofy. I lit his ass up in the A. I'm like, we all just like, yo, what? You was like, pause. Yo, That's the first thing they said. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm hoping, this is what this is my hope, because okay. these guys are both Philly natives. Right. Um, have, have worked together. 
Several times. I'm hoping it's a part of just a noisy rollout of something. But why does it got to be this? Like, why does it have to be a disrespect? You're exposing... I don't think it went too crazy. It did. Like, he's exposing text messages. He's calling them names. He's being Call him a goofy. Like, nah, but it's just like, bro, like, you call him lame, this, that, and the third. Like, where is it coming from? True. Why is it there? Like, why can't it be a phone call? Like, y'all in a group chat. Like, we saw the text. You can call this You can say, like, yo, what's going on? Maybe it has something to do with the whole Uzi Vert. A uh, song, I just want to rock and drama being an like this, but the that's new an, song. That's, that's, that's an Philly opinion. Other than dreams and nightmares. That's an opinion. It's subjective. There, there's no law. Well, you know these artists get upset about these things. Bro, but that's like me saying like... That's why I, Drake don't rock with us. But it's, just, it, it's weird to me that drama and Meek are having this whole situation that stemmed from that whole Drake and Meek shit that drama was caught in the middle of. Oh, yeah. And then it's still... Because, like, me kept saying, like, oh, well, you know, drama always speaks bad on me. Drama's always saying, you know, shit behind my back, to, you know, to industry people, this, that, and the third. And it's just like, all right, well, whatever issues y'all got, keep that shit out of the public and figure it out. You stay over there. I'm going to stay over there. Keep my name out your mouth. Yeah, but I don't, I don't get clicks, though. And I don't sell records. Meek ain't been selling records since when? I mean, since he last decided to put out a record. All right, so maybe so when he come back around, so maybe you should worry move. about that. Maybe that's a part of this. So you think a project is coming soon? I mean, I think. And this is how you roll it out. It's an interesting rollout. I mean, he was. This is you how know, you roll it out. You beef with your from your from your city that hosted. Maybe three, they wasn't never that, really cool. He hosted three of your pivotal mixtapes that put you in a position to be this person. Dream Chasers is a pivotal point in Meek's life. And who was there? DJ Drama. And now this is where y'all shit is at. And maybe Meek feels like drama trying to little bro him still or something. You know what I'm saying? That happens too, where cats always feel because they did a thing for you mm -hmm. at a moment. It's not that for you. I did it. They I got did a it. handle it's on you and they can you. move you I around. I did it with you. No, but that's what I'm, I'm, I hear what you're saying, but some people think when they helped you when you weren't as relevant or not as big and now you're big, right. they want to say, well, you're not going to do this thing. And you're like, yo, bro, like, I, God, we did business. By the years way, the ago. Tiny Dust thing, just to be clear, was with drama or he was just trying to set Meek up to be on Tiny Desk? I saw the text. I'm assuming it was to set Meek up to be on Tiny Desk. It Which was just doesn't seem like a bad thing because those clips but usually go viral. But maybe Meek wasn't into it. Maybe it wasn't okay. a thing then that he wanted fine. to do. Who knows? And that's cool. That's, that's just that's an... Fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. But keep that shit behind closed yeah. doors. Or not nah, and use it a part of your rollout like everybody else. If there's a project coming. But if there isn't, then it just looks a little or, crazy. Or, like, here, but... here's a crazy thing. As a part of your rollout, Put out some music. That's the craziest thing I ever thought of. We'll see. All right. To be continued. Now, this is in your zone. This is in your wheelhouse. Here we go. All right, let's get to it. We just passed uh, the five-year oh. marker oh, of the yeah. Pusha T Drake. <laughs> I thought we were about to talk about the remixes. <laughs> Man, I thought we were about to talk about it. Oh, yeah, and the remixes. Go ahead. We'll do that next. Of the Pusha T Drake incident. The story of Adi Don. Yes. I feel like this was monumental in rap beefs. Okay. Because it fundamentally shifted the way you perceived one of the greats, which is Drake. Okay. We learned about his personal life, things that were unknown to us regular mere mortals. Mm -hmm. Right. As well as received a song from Pusha that was so... Scathing. That no response happened. Jay Prince had to come in like, all right, Drake, nah, nah, there nah. Was, there nah. was a response. You heard it. No, 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 no. No, but that was the, there the was, word, that right? Was the, that was the narrative so, oh, it was so... that, we, that, that they didn't put it out because right. it was too... Fine. So at any rate, um, do you, Lo, believe that, uh, A, Drake officially caught an L in that battle? Mm -hmm. Is that universally accepted and understood? Uh, yes, I do believe that Drake caught an L in that battle. Do you uh, believe that the story of Adi Don, that record, is a permanently attributed and will always forever be hovering around Drake's legend? Yes, just as Ether hovers around Hole. That's right. Right? So it's like, cool, like, you can take that knockout. You know what I mean? Like, there are some things that were said that we were looking at, like, oh, sh like, in Ether, there's a lot of things in that record that were said untrue, true, whatever, that were just like fucking crazy, which caused him to react with... Um, super ugly. Super ugly, which he had to apologize on High 97 because his mom made him. Story of Adidon 
it touched a nerve. Would you say it shifted the universe in it, some way? In that time frame? Yes. As we were watching that shit unfold, Drake is putting out IG responses because of the blackface shit. We looking at him like, oh, you can be touched. Oh, you can be hurt. Or you can be affected. And that's fine because... You're human and it's You're rap. human and it's and, and in rap, when you want to get to the highest heights, you nobody go. comes out unscathed. You gotta go. Nobody comes out. There's very Jay, few Jay, people. Jay caught that rib yeah. shot with Ether. You know what I mean? Like, NWA caught that rib shot with no Vaseline. You know, Cannabis caught that. You know what I mean? Like, they've all caught it. LL caught it. Mad people caught Mad it. Mad people hit up. caught it. Mad or, people caught hit it. Him hit him up. Hit him up. Deep. Like, they, everybody caught it. So like, so when people say like, man, you know, Drake, this, that, and that, they're like, no, the guy, y'all punched in his mouth. Still artists of the decade. All of that. Highest streaming. All of that are all, all the accolades. All that's that all main, but that's, there. and so it's interesting, I'm glad you bring that up because on social media, I often, look, I work in the mainstream space, so I know the difference between right. kind of these hits and charts and, you know, kind of yeah. fans of just songs. And then things that we actually talk about in that are the, there and that are in the hip hop culture, yeah, right? Like right. there's a different, it's a different combo where how many records you sold, how many tickets you sold, mm -hmm. all of that doesn't really matter. What matters in this particular combo is how you handled a face off. Mm -hmm. Like we we watched it unfold. Like they've been going back and forth. Like that cash money, OVO shit has been going back and forth for. Well, a cash money OVO push in all them, Mr. Me Too, then Exodus twenty three one, and like just going infrared. On. In, in, infrared started it, then Duppy Freestyle comes. Duppy Freestyle was fire. Duppy Freestyle was very fire, and then when Duppy Freestyle came and we heard him mention his wife's name, he was like, "Oh, that's what we, we doing. Taking, oh, we taking the gloves off. That's what we doing. It's not, it's, it's not supposed to be women and children. It's supposed to be like." Me and you. you. you me and you. Well, I thought niggas. it was gonna be. It could be more, but if I wasn't gonna do more. Bro, if <laughs> but if we going, if we doing that, I'm now I'm aiming at your friends, I'm aiming at your mother, your father, your kid, all this. Like, let's get to it. And that's what a diss record is. I'm trying to be disrespectful. Drake got disrespected. It's that simple. And it's not even a slight to Drake. It's no slight. He won't see it. He won't see this it's that fine, way. It's fine, but right. you caught an L. You caught an L, my <laughs> just still one of the highest paid, highest earning, highly successful artists of all time. But my <laughs> this time last year, you caught a serious... No, five years ago. It was five years ago. Five, I'm sorry, five years ago. You caught a serious L. Why are you talking to him like that? <laughs> you brought the... He brought... This but is yeah. how he won. He just has been setting you up. Yeah, no. This was his plan I, no, the I whole episode. Yeah, I took the bait. I, no, I didn't know you was going to really talk directly to Drake. No, because no. I didn't know you was going to talk to Drake like that no, on the program. No, I'm, I'm talking about... I'm I was talk, just talking, talking about the moment. Right, but like, all right, in the moment, you caught an L. Yeah, yeah, you but I didn't that. know you was going to do that. No, I'm not talking that. Like, Drake, no. Does he? Oh. Well, oh. exactly. Yeah. It's been the Rap Life Review. See, uh, thank you for tuning in every week. That's what you just did to you, though. Yo, make sure you add, man, the playlist. It's called the Rap Like Playlist. It's available on Apple Music, and you can also subscribe to this wherever you're watching it. For Low in the Desk, I'm Ebro. Thank you for tuning in. See y'all next time. Hope you enjoyed that episode of the Rap Life Review. I'm the Desk, and you can catch me here every single week with Loki and Ebro. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing. Give us a like and drop a comment so we can hit you back next week. <laughs>